Please be seated and let us bow in prayer as we come to God's Word. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of each of our hearts, be found acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength, our Redeemer. Amen. Look into the heavens, count the stars, if you can. Those are the words that God speaks to his servant Abraham as he makes the promise that we've read of today that of this elderly couple, Abraham and Sarah, will come a whole nation, a whole people that God will bless and call his own. If indeed you can count the stars of the heavens. It makes me try to imagine doing something that is truly impossible. Can you imagine something in your own experience, in your own life, that you would deem impossible? Immediately, my mind goes to the, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs winning the Stanley Cup. How about feeding all the hungry in the world? How about counting the stars in the heavens? I know when we go down to our cottage, you see stars that you just don't see when you're in the middle of town. Some of you that live on the countryside are blessed that way. But when you see the heavens in a dark, clear night, the impossibility of counting all those stars and those planets, or those whatever they're called now that Pluto's not a planet anymore, count the stars in the heavens. Impossible. But so is the words that come to us, are the words that come to us in the story of Easter. He is not here. He is risen. He has gone before you to Galilee. He is risen. The Lenten season that we're entering into, that we've entered into now into our third week, is all about preparing ourselves, our hearts, our lives for receiving the impossible. For God doing the impossible in our midst. For God doing the impossible of raising his son from the grave to new life, and his promise to do the very same with those who follow his son. The Lenten season is all about facing the impossible, with doubt, perhaps, humanly speaking, because the impossible is just that. In human terms, things which we cannot imagine being able to do or imagine happening around us. But that which also is entirely possible by the grace and the power of God. And so in many ways, the story we read in the Old Testament today of the impossible promise that God makes to Abraham and to Sarah is truly an Easter story. It's a story about doubt-filled human beings coming before the power and the grace of God and being totally overwhelmed by God's ability and power and grace to do the impossible. We read this story in Genesis chapter 15. It's an ongoing story over several chapters. But particularly in Genesis 15, we meet this couple, probably at this point in their, their uh, ages, about their mid-80s. And God makes a promise to them, to Abraham in particular, and then it's passed on to his wife, Sarah. Even though you are now in your later years, and even though you've had no child to this point in time, I am going to bless you and give you a child who will then be the basis and the start of a whole nation of people that I will give to you. <clears throat> Childless, elderly, a promise that truly seems impossible. A covenant nation built out of them at their age of life. But it says in verse 6 of this 15th chapter, Despite his age, despite the impossibility, humanly speaking, Abraham believed, and it was counted to him as righteousness. <clears throat> humanly speaking, impossible for an 86-year-old, and then it would be even more years before the promise was fulfilled, 99, 99-year-old couple to give birth to a child, let alone a nation of children. In the death and resurrection of Jesus, we see the very same promise. 
that to one who is called the Son, the impossible will happen. He will die, but on the third day he will be raised again to life eternal. All around Jesus in those Easter days that are coming to us in just a few weeks are doubts and uncertainties about the impossible. <clears throat> Jesus had died, and he had even risen and still there were uncertainties. Could this really be happening around them? There was a, one of the disciples named Thomas, or doubting Thomas, as he's come down to us in history. He had heard that Jesus is alive, that the impossible has happened, but he just can't believe it, humanly speaking, on his own. He doubts. He says to the other disciples, Yes, you say that Jesus is risen, but unless I see him with my own eyes, I touch him with my hands, I touch the holes in his hands, the spear mark in his side and his feet. Unless I see and touch, the impossible will remain impossible for me. I will not be able to believe. And Jesus comes to doubting Thomas and says, Thomas, yes, it is impossible in human terms, but come near me. Come beside me, touch my hands, touch my side, touch my feet, and believe. And that's what Doubting Thomas does, and he believes. Believes the impossible when he sees and touches it. That word of doubt and facing the impossible with uncertainty comes up again in the very closing verses of the Gospel of Matthew. Again, we're at that point in the Easter season or the post-Easter season when Jesus has died, but he has risen and he's come among the disciples. And now he's gathered with them for one final moment of instruction. It comes down to us as the famous Great Commission. The final words Jesus will share with his disciples before he returns to heaven. And it says there were those gathered around him, all the disciples. They saw him right there in their midst. They heard his words, but still some doubted. Some were certain, some believed. But even of his closest disciples, we don't know who exactly it is, but some still doubted. Because the impossible, humanly speaking, remained just that. And even though Jesus came among them and was giving them instructions of what they should do when he departs, some still found it, humanly speaking, impossible to believe. Humanly speaking, facing the impossible is just that. But by God's grace and by God's power and the gift of faith that he gives to us to follow him, the impossible becomes possible. I think that's a very appropriate theme for us to look at on this day as we approach our annual meeting. Annual meetings can be boring and can be dry and we may say, what are they all about? But if they are truly about anything. They should be about giving thanks for what God has done in our midst over the past year, over the past period of time, and our trust and our faith that God can do rich and even impossible things in our midst through us in his body, the church, to this very day. That God can take us human beings and do in and through us the impossible. And so I'd invite you to pause and give thanks for just a few moments for the miracles that God is doing, has done, and will continue to do through us in some of the most practical day-to-day -day activities of this congregation. But I want you to think about them as miracles, because that is truly what they are. The miracle of our Tweedsmere Women's Missionary Society. And it truly is, in my mind, a miracle. With changing times and uh, challenging times and busy lives and people getting older and whatever, it seems that WMS in many places across Canada, our Women's Missionary Society, not to use just the short term, term, is kind of falling by the wayside. There are many presbyteries and congregations that don't have WMS anymore, don't have that focus on mission, studying mission, gathering together in fellowship and in prayer and learning, which happens in the WMS. But here at Tweedsmere, I think there's kind of a, a bit of a, a rejuvenation of WMS happening. And I think it's a bit of a miracle. 
when I see WMS gathering month by month, and I would say they have 15 ladies every every gathering. It's an amazing thing, and to see them not only just meeting and learning about the mission of our church, but gathering together in song and in, in good fellowship. We're sharing with some of the ladies in the WMS about our friendship groups, our small groups. And they said, well, we have that in WMS already. We can share with one another our concerns. We can pray together. We can learn of God's purposes and God's mission in our midst. We have something of a small group, a friendship group, right here in our WMS. I think that is a real thing that we should give thanks to God for, a miracle of the impossible against the trend of WMS is falling by the wayside of losing that interest in the mission of God's church. But here in Tweedsmere, we have a vital, dynamic, friendly, learning and growing women's missionary society. In my mind, that's the impossible happening and becoming the possible in our midst. I look down here and I see Brandon, and I know he's not going to be here with us much longer before he ventures out to Australia. Brandon and some of our other young people. I believe are doing the impossible and making it possible. Brendan doesn't just want to put him on the spot a little bit, but he's going to be leaving for Australia soon, so his embarrassment can uh, just last a little bit longer. But I think Brendan, by God's grace, is doing something truly miraculous in our midst. God is doing something through Brendan. Can you imagine a young person in our midst not just showing up? I think we'd be happy if young people just showed up on Sunday. At least I would be happy if they just showed up. But Brandon is doing something far more than just showing up. He's saying to God, I want to be a young missionary for you. And I'm willing to go to the ends of the earth, because I think from my perspective, that's what Australia is. I think it's right around the other side of the earth, Brandon. He's willing to go and commit himself to God, to allow in his life the impossible for a young man to become a missionary on the other side of the earth and to do it with joy and excitement and vibrancy that Brandon has. I think that is a sign of God's grace working in our midst and certainly in Brandon and his family. I think some of the children's ministries that are going on in Tweedsmere have been going on in our prep plan for the future are again, I believe, an exciting example of a miracle that's happening in our midst. God taking our young people's leaders. The McGilvery family come to mind. Liz Ryan comes to mind with that very successful and, and uh, really exciting uh, pre-Christmas event. Little Bethlehem or something you call it, Elizabeth. I forget now the names. Go to Bethlehem. The, the mind is going already. Thank you. That for me was the, poss the impossible in a very busy season of the year, becoming the possible by God's grace. Our, young, our Sunday school leaders are planning for another similar type of mini vacation Bible school over the Easter season. They're calling it Rock and Roll. I heard that initially and I thought, what are they going to bring in, Mick Jagger or something? But you have to rock and roll away from the entrance to the tomb. Rock and Roll. A little miniature vacation Bible school right in the time when people are busy, but when they're also focusing on the resurrection of our Savior Christ. And to have a, a little mini vacation Bible school, I think is going to be a tremendous opportunity for witness in our community that we're called to serve and to outreach to. I wish some of you could be here on through the week when folk come in and they've heard about Tweedsmere as a place where they can get support. Perhaps they can get a little grocery voucher where they can get a listening ear, where they can come in and have a word of prayer if need be. But our benevolent fund is making all of that possible, and that's possible because of the kind of impossible success of our silent auction at the Christmas season. The McDonald family have done a tremendous work over the past couple years in making our benevolent fund healthy and vibrant and able to reach out to people who come into Tweedsmere through the week when most of you aren't here meeting the needs of the needy, meeting the needs of those in our own community that need just a little bit of encouragement in their lives. And I think the dynamic of our women's missionary, our women's fellowship group is another one of those ways in which God is blessing and making the possible, the impossible, possible. When I look at the list in the annual report, 
of the missionary outreach that our women's fellowship group does beyond our regular offering givings. It is really impressive. Reaching out to the youth shelter, Choices Youth Shelter, reaching out to Highlands Youth for Christ, reaching out to the PAT to support the hospital chaplaincy or the pastoral care department at our local hospital, reaching out to Hospice Dufferin. Very thankful in my own family that they reach out to Alan and Natalie with their ministry to campus for Christ. Beyond what comes in on the plate week by week are these tremendously exciting missionary support done by the Women's, Mission, Women's Fellowship Ministry here at Tweedsmere. All of these, and I could go on to list many more, of local stewardship uh, endeavors that are becoming possible by the grace of God may seem to be impossible, humanly speaking, but by God's grace and God's power, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is alive and well in our midst today, making the impossible possible. That's the good news of Abraham and Sarah. That's the good news to doubting Thomas. That's the good news to the disciples of Christ that gathered in those last glimpses of their Savior. That's the good news of Paul when he declares in Romans chapter 8, for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his as well. By the power of God, the impossible is possible, and it is possible in our very midst. As in the words of Abraham, he opened his heart to God in faith. And God credited to him righteousness. May we be those same followers of our God, our living and reigning God, to believe the impossible, to give thanks for God, and to God for making the impossible possible in our day, in our midst, to his praise and to his glory. Let us pray. <coughs>